because I always look at, I always believe we should be updated on the technology and to be able to utilize it to be the most effective, right? There's something being built all the time. Right now you got chat GPT, they got the world going crazy with open AI. And the amount of things that I see that's going to be possible with that, it's crazy. It's going to change everything. They got Valley E to where, you know, you can duplicate somebody's voice and it sound just like them. I, right? I, I'm worried about that. Yeah, some of these things are dangerous. They don't be saying I'm doing mad shit I'm not doing. Yeah. But also, you know, it may be a it may be a way where now I can you can blame it on AI. So it's a twofold. Well, like you said, either way. Right. Either way. I didn't go prove it. Either way. <laughs> whatever it is, I'm gonna figure it out. Now, but what are you doing in this space? You know what I mean? What's the future of Dame Dash Empires? Well, I think that Web three, if we understand it early, we'll be able to have a say so in the narrative. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of things in that space haven't realized itself yet, but there's potential. Mm -hmm. It was almost like when YouTube first came around Twitter and no one knew how to monetize it, but they knew it was worth a lot. So I believe that based on the transparency of the transactions um, and the way you can um, track, uh, you know, after you sell something to resell. Right. And the, that it becomes an auction block to sell any ancillary thing that you want. I just think we, it's time to start practicing to get familiar, to, to have a dog in that fight mm -hmm. to be mentioned in 10 years when they start talking about who and what is a brand. Mm -hmm. And it's in a language that I think is intentionally complicated to turn off or trigger a creative or someone that just doesn't like to learn that way. Mm -hmm. And what that leaves space for is a third party to have to translate it to you and rob you blind. Yeah. Which is exactly what happened in the real world. Or mm -hmm. I call it oxygen world. Yeah. So it's just, again, it's just like when the internet came out, it's something that making so much noise, if you don't pay attention and learn it now, it's just not bright. That's and then you wonder why you in the 99% all the time. Because mm -hmm. you ain't paying attention to what the 1% is. You always waiting for 88 percent to start before you start then you end up when it's you know two dollar bottles you know what i'm saying instead of when it was you know wait and i believe that that's what we've been asking for if i look at all the complaints of the culture if it were the real complaints of the culture is the fact that we don't have a system like blockchain that we can utilize to create our own system mm -hmm. right to where it's decentralized where you ain't got to ask somebody like i like what my bro la russell doing you understand me with his independent movement creating his music selling it on his own platforms Rather than, because I seen somebody mad at him because he was talking about a deal somebody tried to give him. And he was explaining, like, no, nah, just the fact that they tried to play me on a deal at all. You understand I me? Mean, it makes me not want to do business with them. I mean, right? Welcome to my world. Yeah. That's what you call I call that the nigga deal. Yeah. If you offer me the nigga deal up top, yeah. don't try to come back to me with a better deal. Right. Because I already know you tried me. Right. You know what I mean? And, and, but when you know your worth and you have a technology to where you can create your own worth and your own value and you can leverage your own IP, then that's when we get to a place where we can win because I believe we can give ourselves reparations. You understand me? We don't have to, like everything that we complain about in the system, we now have the ability to create our own, mm -hmm. right? Like there are no more problems. There are only solutions that you're not taking at this point, right? right? And that goes across the board with any and everything. A lot of people be so stuck in their feelings that they don't never use their logic, right? And so some people like revolving and trauma binding and stuck in that spot where they get to complain and it makes them feel like they don't have to take the responsibility. But now this is the time of accountability. We don't have excuses, right? All we have is solutions and tools. So when I teach technology, I teach it from the place of, you know, I, I, I know what, you know, in, in previous times, nobody would give you your own media outlet to where you can create your own narrative. Now you can utilize the internet and social media to create your own narrative. And trust me, I was trying to tell people that 10 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I was saying. That's what I thought. That's why I say we that generation that that's finally right. listen. You're right. Uh, and it's be like, well, me and EYL do for this collaboration. But I could do my show on my own channel. But why? It makes more sense if we work together. Right? My, my formula for unity is solidarity, right? Sticking together for a common cause, inclusion, including each other in things, like bringing each other to the table on different deals. And that breeds unity, mm -hmm. right? You don't just jump into unity. You have to breed it. You have to create the conditions for it. You got to live it. Right. But we've never seen it, so we don't know what those conditions are like. We don't know what that experience is like. So, therefore, we know about the idea, but we don't know about the reality. Trust me, bro. I tried. 
It's gonna happen. I've tried in every industry. Yeah. Movies, music, yeah. art, films, every industry, fashion. I've always tried to get us together. I've tried every time for decades. But I think this time it might work. There's there's a lot of people that are willing and a lot of people that are ready. And this generation will be the one that actually take all of the ideas, all of those feelings of frustration, of trying and, and failing and trying again and being let down by your own people. And now you see a generation that say, damn, man, I think it might work with them. And maybe it don't completely be ushered in with us, but the next ones get it right. Each generation gets the opportunity to make it better. And then at some point in time, we're not complaining about their program because we got our own. Well, this is what I look at myself. To me, like Rakim and Karis, one of them, but you know, Grandmaster Cat, all that, they were the best, but they were so early that they weren't able to reap the economic benefits because the market wasn't ready yet, but they deserved it. Yeah. On this independent shit, I'm that. Mm. I'm the very beginnings of it. Yeah. And the first generation of it, most of the time, doesn't get to benefit. You get to benefit when you see, you know, a couple of generations, the next generation, mm -hmm. two generations down. But I'm lucky enough to still be crispy enough to still be cool with the people that finally get it. Mm -hmm. So I will be able to reap the benefit mm -hmm. of the teaching. Most people don't get celebrated till they're not here anymore. That's a fact. I've been able to be celebrated. Mm -hmm. And I also know that everything I'm teaching Everything that I say is based on my experience. I can show you how to sell out and get money like that. But, and I could tell you how to be independent and feel free. Mm -hmm. The next thing I have to be able to tell you is how to make an indie billion to look at. Mm. That I haven't done yet. Mm. So there is a challenge for me. I know how to be wealthy with love. I know how to now have a family. I know how to make sure my kids go to you know, better schools and this, that, and the third. I know how to live a better life than most people. But I'm going to teach how and do it independently, architect, all that. I need to be able to factually say, this is how you make a billion. The right way. Mm -hmm. This is how you do everything that they say, like, not worth habit. You know what I mean? Not based on the multiple and that. Nah, I could look at that. You feel me? And so there's still a challenge. Right. There's still a war to win. When you, it's like Haiti. When Haiti won that independence and their freedom, they had to be taxed in a way to make sure and never they never looked free. Right. Because otherwise they would inspire every other black nation on the planet Earth. Mm -hmm. And so that's the same thing with any black revolutionary or any revolutionary period. When you fight for your freedom, your independence, and you win, you come out on that other side with integrity, they need to destroy you so nobody else follows your blueprint. So you need to destroy them. We got to win. That's what destroys them. Exactly. So they can't do nothing? Yeah. It's just a cycle. You know, it hasn't been that long. Yeah. It just feels like it. I mean, but relatively speaking, the Great Wall of China, what, it took 2,000 years? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm, I'm proud of black people, and I want to say this to end the show, because a, a lot of times we get a lot of slack for what we don't have. But we don't often talk about the things that we've already done and things that we're doing against our odds. The doorknob itself was created by a black man. The filament and the light bulb was created. So when you walk in your very house and you open the door and you flicker the lights, you have to thank black people. You understand me? When you stop that stop sign, you have to by black people. Yeah, think of black person. Everything. But we often look at, you know, the ancient comedic people. We look at their representation as their ability to single task focus on something. Right. Everybody that was a part of that, there was generations that didn't get to see the building of that pyramid done. Right. But they eat, they slept, they worked, they lived and everybody was on one accord for collective consciousness. And when they was done, the rest of the world marveled at that and all existence because it never happened again. Right. And what we're trying to do is how do we get back to that same formula of single task thinking? But without a vision, you don't have a destination. Right. So a vision is a movement without leadership. Right. So we have many movements and the leadership consistently get killed. But now it has to exist in the minds of everybody to say, well, this is the vision and the vision has to be decentralized. So no matter who you shoot, no matter who you kill, it continues to live.
just in our habits, right? It's better to create habits than it is goals because habits meets goals. You can create a goal you want to. I want to unify my brother, but you don't have the habits of unity. You don't know how to stop gossiping on people, right? You don't know how to stop snitching on people. You don't know how to stop killing your brother. You don't know how to work together. You don't even have the habits and the characteristics of the goal that you say you want to meet. So you have a culture who's immature because we're young. We just coming off civil rights in 1964. And before that, we had every other thing that tried to stop us, right? So I believe we have to give ourselves grace to understand that the fact that we still fighting against all odds and we still winning and we still putting scores on the board means that we have people still with that heart and that spirit. And there's nothing else for us to do but to continue to fight until we win. Acclamations. Yes, sir. So being a God, man, as I'm going to say this, and I'm here with my good brother, you definitely deserve your flowers because you are a success story for everybody else to marvel at. The ability for a black man in America to do what you've done, the odds are astronomical. And I mean that for you to still be here, we didn't see you take many fights. You fought for your children, you didn't fought for businesses, you didn't fought against lawsuits, you fight against yourself to go through that shadow self and then continue to rise. That being a fighter is the greatest example a black man can show to another black man because so many people give up, right? And so just within that itself, I give you flowers for being a successful black man. Um, doing a lot of things sometimes could be considered madness and insanity. But for me, it's security, mm. you know, because it means I don't ever have to depend on one thing. And my challenge, also have a hair care, Dash hair care, uh, led by my daughter, Ava. Okay, I'll this, say what That's is. not Tallulah, baby. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm doing that. <laughs> but not, I got a beard. The beard, yes. Yeah. Yes, I got you. Right now, just, just right, right, now, may not know. right now, not having hair is a choice. Yes, sir. If I wanted to go and, I could. Yes, sir. I just never felt like having hair. You know, even when I had it, I saved it because, you know, when you're handsome in the street, you become a target. And what I noticed was a lot of ugly dudes had the girls. Mm. So I was like, I'm going to just act ugly. They'll leave me alone. Yeah. And I'll get the girls. Yeah. Because when you're not aesthetically pleasing, your personality is what becomes attractive. Your That's confidence. a fact. You know, you see some funny looking dudes pull some pretty checks. Yeah. You know, if you're not, you know what I mean? Like it happens and that's all from confidence. Mm -hmm. So that my, my, my business model is fight like an ugly dude. Mm. Period. Right. And it works for me. I agree with that. You never know, act handsome. Yeah. You you're know, target. Being on the opposite side of the spectrum of ugly my whole life. You understand me? I had to deal with those same complications. So I had to learn, you understand me, to have a handsome personality, right? Because I never really liked compliments when I was younger because I feel like I didn't earn it. Like, I was born this way. That ain't no gift. That ain't no skill. The way I think, the way I develop my mind, the way I move, I can make you laugh. I'm funny. Those are real characteristics and traits that I can bet on, right? Those other things, that's a weakness. So there's a lot of people who look good and they grow up and they have nothing else to bet on but they looks. And then they understand me. And they become insecure. Yeah. Because God is always going to make you get old. Right. Gravity, even though black don't crack. That's a fact. But like you said, affirmations is important. That's a fact. You know? I don't think anybody ever should say, yo, I'm an ugly ass nigga. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yo, can't believe I'm ugly. Like, no one should say that. Yeah. But there are, there are, I will say this. this. Yeah, that's the point. C.T. Fletcher said this. He said, you ever notice? Some people, when they walk across the street, some people get rushed. And some people get grace. He says, usually the ugly people that get rushed across the street. You understand me? <laughs> and the beautiful people you have more patience with. So he said, if anybody ever rushed you in life, it's because you're ugly. <laughs> <laughs> well, they, they, were, were they trying to rush you to get in the bed? <laughs> <laughs> well, they might rush to cut off the lights first. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, I, 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 you know, I believe everybody is what they think they are. You understand me? But President Mugabe said we don't walk around with x-rays, so inner beauty only counts so much. Mm -hmm. But I actually believe inner beauty is the most beautiful qualities that a person can have because there's a lot of people who look good on the outside, but they're ugly on the end. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of men who try to fake confidence, but in the, ins in the inside, they're scared. It's a lot of people who look rich, but on the inside, they're a slave. You understand me? So it's more important to be you know, who you are on the inside rather than the outside. 
And there's way too many people that walk around and when they get home and they by themselves, they hate themselves, right? They hate themselves for the things that they did, yeah. right? And they're around people when they're doing it, they're reinforced to say that this is okay, this is a normal one. They get by themselves, God talking to them and say, you was a sucker the whole time. Mm -hmm. And that's why there are so many people that commit themselves to drugs and alcoholism and they are in environments, right, to where they're trying to be social and give themselves value because they feel worthless. You understand me? But when you stand on business and you stand on integrity and you move in a way to where you never go against your principles, you always be free. You understand me? And you all stay godly like me and my good brother, Dane Dash. So stay on the opposite side of ugly and move like us. It's been a high level conversation. Tap in.